What's going on from New York City, everyone? I'm Omar Jimenez, and I am so happy to be back here with you for another exciting day of CNN 10. Let's get right into it. If you search for this show on the world's most popular search engine, or if you're watching on YouTube, then you've used a Google product to get here. This week, Google is in the news because the U.S. Justice Department and eight states have sued Google, accusing the company of harming their competition in the online advertising market. For years, critics have said that Google has exploited their power and thwarted any competition. They say Google has used anti-competitive, exclusionary, and unlawful means to create a monopoly over digital advertising, and that they've acquired their rivals through anti-competitive mergers. This move is the Biden administration's first big antitrust case against a big tech company. The eight states span both U.S. coasts and include California, Colorado, Connecticut, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Tennessee, and Virginia. And while lawmakers and regulators have expressed concerns about Google in the past, they've failed to pass new legislation or regulations. The last antitrust complaint against Google was issued by the Trump administration in 2020. So let's hear now from CNN's Anna Stewart, based in the London Bureau, who has more on what we can expect from Google. Allegations that Google holds too much control are nothing new. But this latest legal broadside from the U.S. Justice Department, its first major antitrust case under the Biden administration, has certainly ramped up the pressure. Now, this complaint argues that Google has actively and illegally dominated the digital advertising market for many years, as detailed by the U.S. Attorney General in a press conference Tuesday. For 15 years... Google has pursued a course of anti-competitive conduct that has allowed it to halt the rise of rival technologies, manipulate auction mechanics to insulate itself from competition, and force advertisers and publishers to use its tools. Now, the lawsuit accuses the tech giant of controlling too much of the ecosystem of digital advertising, including three main areas. Firstly, the technology used by major website publishers to offer ad space. Secondly, the tools used by advertisers to buy that space. And thirdly, the largest automated ad exchange, essentially linking the publisher with the advertiser. The US government is calling for Google to be broken up and forced to spin off at least its online advertising exchange and ad server for publishers. Google responded with a statement saying, Today's lawsuit from the DOJ attempts to pick winners and losers in the highly competitive advertising tech sector. Goes on to say their flawed argument would slow innovation, raise advertising fees, and make it harder for thousands of small businesses and publishers to grow. Google is not new to fighting antitrust legal battles. The DOJ sued Google for its dominance in web searches in 2020. The EU Commission launched an antitrust probe into its conduct in digital advertising last year and has already fined Google three times in antitrust cases, totaling more than $9 billion so far. All right, 10 second trivia. What is the currency of Russia called? The rupee, ruble, yen, or franc? It's the ruble, the basic monetary unit of the Russian Federation. We turn now to Russia's war in Ukraine. On February 24th of last year, Russia launched a large-scale invasion of Ukraine, and fighting there has continued in the now nearly year ever since. On Wednesday, Ukraine received what's being called a major sign of support from the United States and Germany. The nations both announced that they're sending tanks to the front line in Ukraine. Germany plans to send 14 tanks, and the U.S. is planning to send its special Abrams tanks to Kyiv. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham called the decision a turning point in the war, and President Biden, in a speech, said the tanks will enhance Ukraine's capacity to defend its territory and achieve its strategic objectives. The president also announced a group of 50 nations that are making other contributions in the form of military equipment and weapons. As you all know, I've been saying this for a long time. The expectation on the part of Russia is we're going to break up. We're not going to stay united but we are fully, thoroughly, totally united. And though there was no immediate reaction from Russian President Putin, a Russian ambassador called Germany's decision to send tanks an extremely dangerous decision that would take the conflict to a new level of confrontation. We'll hear now from CNN international diplomatic editor, Nick Robertson, who has more on what to expect 
from Russian President Vladimir Putin. Уважаемые граждане России, Putin's biggest issue in 2023 will be feeding his war in Ukraine, both men and materiel. At a visit to an armaments producer in mid-January, he commended workers for upping output, three shifts a day, 24-7. He told them they'd be exempt from call-up for military service in Ukraine. Hundreds of thousands of military-aged men fled Russia last year, fearing conscription. More than 100,000 Russian servicemen already believed killed in Ukraine. It's the most unpopular feature of Putin's war so far. More recruitment may spur more resentment of him. But at the rate he burns through soldiers on the front lines means this dilemma is only going to get worse. His second biggest issue will be paying to feed the war. International economic sanctions are beginning to bite. If they chew into Russian citizens' pockets, then Putin has a problem. The dangerous high wire walk Putin is trying to pull off, keep the value of the ruble up, keep people in jobs, it's only going to get harder. A cold winter next year, impoverished Russians on the streets risk a revolt against the war and Putin himself. And this will play into Putin's long-range concerns. An election 2024. In 2021, he signed a law allowing him to remain leader until 2036, but he has built a house of cards. Russian elections are neither free nor fair. Putin has snuffed out dissent, locked up opposition leaders, taken control of all media. But even that requires mafia-style playing of Russia's power brokers against one another. If he can't make gains in Ukraine, or worse, starts racking up losses, his grip on Russia's power game could weaken. For today's 10 out of 10 news, a story as old as time. The rivalry between cat and microwave? Yeah, well, we have an insane video to prove it. So I'm gonna let CNN's Jeannie Moose explain it from here with the details of this epic story. There was nothing micro about the epic battle waged by Bentley the cat against this microwave. He yanked it, he physically moved it. He would have certainly gotten into it if it weren't for the child lock his owners put on it to keep him out. His body language while doing it, it doesn't seem like a cat. <laughs> he's got this physique, he's got like a great body. Using his legs like arms, he might have pulled the microwave right off the counter if the cord weren't plugged in. No wonder this sometimes cross-eyed cat from Sheridan, Oregon has gone viral with millions of views. Bentley has been obsessed with the microwave ever since Brittany Sheasel left pizza in it. The microwave is wide open and the pizza is on the floor and gone pretty much. They also had to put a lock on the kitchen cabinets where Bentley uses all four legs. Without the child lock, we clocked him getting into the microwave in eight seconds flat. Brittany says the appliance is his best friend. This story reminds me of one I did 27 years ago about Piggy the Bull Terrier, who got into the fridge so often his owner had to keep it locked. And then I stick it through the hole. But when it's cat versus microwave, sometimes the cat moves the appliance, and sometimes the appliance moves him. And before I go, it's time. I want to give a huge shout out to Elmira High School in Elmira, Oregon. We hope you and everyone watching there and around the world have a wonderful day. I'm Omar Jimenez. It was so great to join you all today. See you soon.